uh, some of you are having problem uh, in this mode of delivery as well. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, that's why we have made, I have made uh, some changes, changes in modality of presentation, my presentation and the content we have as well. Uh, maybe uh, there is some problem in my delivery also. Maybe most of you are from, not from English background as well. Uh, that's why I have simplified the course. Uh, that's why you can easily grasp the idea. And as far as possible, I'll try to make uh, our class uh, communicative as well. Uh, for this also, I have sent you emails. Maybe you went through them, I hope. Uh, and I have sent you today also, uh, send you the slides I prepare for today's class. And as I told you in my last class, uh, if you go through these content, I've simplified this. If you go through this content before we sit <clears throat> for our class, it is easier. And you can uh, also, we can discuss also, and you background, I mean. That's why I again request you that uh, for the, uh, I again request you to go through the slide I send you the content I sent you before our class, uh, then it would be easier for us just in our class to get that in our class, right? Uh, that is my request. I hope you all have a wonderful uh, vacation. That's right for Nepalese people, for our foreigner friend, maybe they had a uh, good or wonderful vacation, free time and most of you have sent me your assignment also. Remember that, that assignment too was your final assignment. We'll again and again revisit and we'll try to make it better. And we'll make our grade also better. From today's class onward, you are supposed to write only reflection. There are no assignments uh, of this subject, right? That's why don't worry about the subject. Again and again, we'll revisit our previous classes and we will uh, try to make our assignment, our understanding better. Not only assignment, assignment is not a big thing, right? Our understanding uh, bigger than that. That's why uh, we will again and again go back to that. We'll collect some articles, right? You can, we can talk to uh, each other also. You can ask me, we can individually sit for the betterment of our assignment as well. And we will try to make our assignment better. And you won't have heavy load from my side. You can easily do other assignment. It means assignment of other subjects, right? So initially, I try to somehow uh, make you busy because most of the teacher, uh, what happens is that uh, they provide you lots of assignment at the end of the semester and students, they have a lot of problem. For me, uh, following my own experience, I gave you assignment at the initial point of the, or initial <clears throat> beginning of my course, but later on, uh, you won't have many assignment, only reflection sit and write only this, not everything, whatever we discuss only your understanding in the reflection page. And better if you can uh, critically present uh, your assignment, maybe Lakshman sir, he, he maybe uh, had the class of critical writing. You had the class of critical writing, I mean critical essay. Simply try to be critical, critical in the sense that not criticizing, Criti critical being critical is not being right writing or uh, making the point of criticism, simply uh, you just, uh, be critical. Critical means your own argument should be there to say something is good or something is bad. Be evaluative. Okay. Once again, uh, I would like. To... Uh, sir, excuse me. Yes, yes, excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, but I'm not clear about that uh, assignment model too. 
because uh, just before that say you said that the process of um, compounds are like blending and uh, acronyms, uh, acronyms right so and i submitted like that why that way only so after that say again you sent another mail so i found another one so i'm not clear about that okay today i think uh, chitana ma'am she will present right and you will have concept or we'll discuss again don't worry right okay chitana ma'am you can start now <clears throat> Okay. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, uh, Kumar sir, to uh, have for having given this opportunity to check our understanding, uh, to share with the class uh, what we have understood. I hope I can do justice. I prepared a presentation on compounds and minor word class and inflection, but however, I've been asked to uh, share only my views and my presentation on compounding. Um, so. Uh, what basically is compounding? Uh, to me, compounding is like uh, the process of combining two words, usually morphemes, in order to create a new word, which is commonly like a noun and a verb or an adjective. Um, compounds were, compound words are usually formed when two words are used together or they are combined together to give them a new meaning. And compound words can also um, uh, be written in different ways. We will be coming for, uh, we will be discussing that also in uh, the presentation. And uh, compounds, uh, as we can see in the second bullet point is that it's written as either one word, which is uh, described as sun plus glasses, uh, which makes it into another combined word as sunglasses. And sometimes there's two hyphenated words, which talks about like in the next word, life threatening, life plus threatening. And uh, sometimes two separate words can co be combined to become, uh, a a a sometimes it is written as two separate words, which is uh, depicted in the example uh, saying cricket stadium. Now, uh, when we talk of open compounds, you know, uh, there are three types of compounds, basically. Mm. Okay, uh, there are um, some classes of compounds and uh, I will be briefly describing and discussing about those classes of compounds. And they are classified into endocentric, exocentric, as we learned. These are the two main ones that are asked us to concentrate on. However, I'll just briefly mention up about uh, copulative compound and appositional compound as well. Uh, when we talk of endocentric compounds, they are basically uh, compounds which uh, has the rightmost element of that compound, which actually identifies the meaning of the entire word that it is related to. Let's say, for example, the word dog food or the word fireman, or the word blackboard. Now here, as we can see that food is the head in this word, and dog is the modifier, and it means food for dog. When we talk of an endocentric compound, it is, um, uh, as we say that it expresses the meaning of the compound, uh, and it belongs to the same lexical category as the compound as a whole. However, in an endocentric compound, as we can see that it has a head, one, uh, the first and foremost that it has a head. Um, it has the categorical part that contains the basic meaning of the, the whole compound, the entire word. And it is also comprises, it comprises of modifiers which restricts the meaning of that word, okay? So, which is depicted in the dog house where house is the head, as I said earlier, and dog is a modifier. And the whole word is understood as a house that is uh, intended for a dog to stay, okay? Uh, the next one is exocentric compound. The meaning of the compound, basically exocentric compound uh, uh, in this, it is um, the meaning of the compound does not come from the meaning of its part. It comes from the, uh, in the sense that it cannot be transparently guessed. Uh, to cite an example, the word redhead or egghead. And when I talk of an exocentric compound, in this, the compounds in which the lexical um, sorry, in the uh, in this compound, the semantic category of the whole world word does not relate to uh, with one of its constituents. Okay, and um, these are basically um, um, some unexpressed semantic heads. Like you know, they have um, in the form of a person or in the form of a plant or an animal. And the meaning of these words, as I mentioned already, cannot be guessed from its constituent parts. To give another example, I would say that the English compound, as Sir had also cited in his presentation and uh, told us about it, the word uh, white collar. It is basically 
neither a kind of a caller and nor a white thing. And in uh, exocentric compound, the word class is basically determined through uh, uh, determined lexically and it uh, uh, lexically disregarding the class of its con constituents. Okay. Um, moving to uh, sorry. Uh, moving to the next uh, type of compound, I'll just briefly say we don't really have to um, uh, concentrate on this one as uh, Sir had uh, mentioned last time. These are co copulative compounds and copulative compounds are compounds which have two semantic heads and these are recognized by the possibility of adding um, a word and in between the two heads. Let's say for example, bittersweet or sleepwalk. There are other examples like yin yang, you know, uh, the possibility mentally in our mind that we can actually be adding the word and there, but it actually can go as one word. Okay. And um, the other word uh, is also, uh, yeah, yin yang. And the opposition, uh, oppositional compounds, this type of compound refers to um, lexemes that have two um, opposite attributes or contrary attributes. And this classifies the, comp uh, which classify the compound. For example, uh, the word player coach. Now in this, uh, the word player coach, it's someone who is a player as well as a coach. Um, what I'd like to add over here is that in this compound, uh, both uh, compound members have the same uh, referent. Uh, to give an example, if I were to give, uh, like I think Sir had given this example in the class, he talked about student worker. Now, student worker is a type of worker, but also a type of student. So this is what is meant by oppositional compounds. Um, there are various types of compounds. I, the, main, the main three that Sir taught us was closed compound, open compounds, and hyphenated compounds. However, while I was just reading some materials, I just briefly read about uh, another type of compound called rhyming compound. I'll just make mention of it. I don't think really we need to have uh, to know it uh, in detail. Um, so closed compounds are two moderately short words that appear together and it appears as one. Let's say, for example, the word housewife or the word weekend, word makeup, and there are many other words like that. So if we were to describe an example like uh, the directions, when we talk of the four directions, we, uh, four, six, four, five, eight directions, basically. So the compass directions are closed compounds as well. To give an example, it's, uh, you can actually say northwest or you can also say Southeast. This is also a compound. When sometimes we attach numbers, numbers are suffixed with fold, like, you know, many fold, two fold. Uh, we use this kind of numbering to show that, uh, um, uh, uh, that these also can make compounds. And in compounds, we also have uh, instances of when we use prepositions. When a preposition and a verb, are, uh, they come together, they form also a closed compound. Let's say, for example, underline. So under is a preposition and line is the verb out there. And another example is outreach. So outreach is a, uh, out is a preposition and reach is a verb. Then another example as we can describe is an adverb and a verb that come together to form another type of close compound, another close compound. And an example we can say is update or downsize. Uh, when an adjective or a verb come together, also they uh, fall into the category of closed compound. And that is uh, to cite an example in the words blacklist or whitewash. When we are whitewashing the house or we are whitewashing our cars, um, uh, that's how we use those words. And uh, a noun and a verb that come together uh, also is an example of closed compound. And to cite an example of such a word uh, would be the word uh, compound word manhandle. Moving to hyphenated compounds, these are compounds when two or more words are connected by a hyphen. In this type of compounds, we have compounds that contain affixes such as um, the word in the word is shown over here, house, and then there's a hyphen and build er, as you can see, er is the affix over there. And uh, especially in the word single mindedness, of course, uh, it's broken into two again single and mind, and ed is written and mindedness is there. Okay. Um, then we have an adjective, adjective compounds, uh, hyphenated compound like bittersweet, dark green, get together, or well known. These are also some examples of hyphenated compounds. When a verb and verb compound, uh, when a verb and verb is combined together, they form a hyphen, hyphenated compound of like, uh, to give example, blow dry or freeze dry. Yeah. Uh, then there are some words, uh, compounds that contain particles particles or let's say even uh, prepositions or conjunctions like the word father-in-law 
or mother-in-law or sister-in-law and the words like salt and pepper as well. Um, then we have adjectives which um, there are in, in some compound, hyphenated compound words, the adjectives, they precede the noun. Um, in this word round table, the adjective over here is round, which, uh, which tells us about uh, the type of table that is, but round table is also referred to, uh, uh, if you were to actually refer to the meaning, it uh, talks about a round table conference or a meeting that is there, but it can also describe um, the type of table that we are, uh, that uh, um, is there. Uh, talking of open compounds, now open compounds, they involve, this particular process involves a newer combination of usually longer words, uh, like such as we can say, give example, remote learning, table tennis, police station, or a cigarette lighter. These are just uh, some of the examples and we can form many more like this. Mm. The other type of uh, new uh, compound that I discovered when I was just reading and uh, going through some of the materials on the internet, what I found was there is something called rhyming compounds, which is not really much talked about in uh, while uh, teaching compounds. But uh, it was interesting to note, just for my knowledge, I think it would really be okay for me to share it with you. It's a compound word that contains rhyming elements and uh, thus it is known as rhyming compounds. Uh, words like fuddy daddy or voodoo, you know, mostly these words are commonly found in some kind of songs or when we are talking with babies or we are playing nursery rhymes like, um, you know, uh, also another word like piggy wiggy. Now, the main characteristic, as I said, if of rhyming compounds is they're very melodic. They're easy to remember also and also to, easy to pronounce. Mm, there was an, um, uh, another um, uh, information in terms of uh, the plurals of compounds. Uh, compounds um, generally follow the regular rules by adding the uh, regular uh, S inflection to their last element. Um, but when we do that, there are two exceptions and uh, this uh, makes, um, there are two exceptions in taking the inflection on the first element. So here we have a word called passerby, which again, when you add the, uh, the S inflection, it becomes passersby. And uh, there was another word called listener in, um, but it resulted in the word when you add the S inflection, it says listeners in. I have a little doubt about listeners in over here, which I think I would want to take it up with sir also, because this was just information that I read on the internet, but I'm not too sure how the listeners in really becomes, it becomes an exception. Um, then there are um, uh, a few compounds which end in uh, full, okay, full, and they usually take the plural inflection on the last element. Uh, and the, uh, the peculiarity is that they have a less common plural with the inflection on the first element. So let's say, for example, when we use the word mouthful. Now, if we add the S inflection in this, it becomes mouthful. Or let's say we talk about spoonful, you know, a spoonful of uh, sugar. Uh, then it becomes two spoons full of sugar or two spoonfuls. Sometimes people say it as well. But spoonsful would be the correct way of um, identifying it. Then talking about compound, compounds that end in the word, like I gave you an example earlier in the hyphenated um, over here. We talked about, um, uh, is that gone? Okay, uh, like we also used over here, get together, uh, well known, and uh, we talked about if, um, uh, this word like part, uh, with the particles, father-in-law. So giving an example coming over here, the compounds that end in in-law, it allows the plural either uh, on the first element or sometimes informally uh, in a conversation on the last element. So uh, sister-in-law, if you to, we were to add the S inflection, it becomes sisters-in-law. Okay. Uh, both observations that I found also while I was reading the material that I think so also mentioned that, you know, there is no limit. It's not necessary that we can have just two words or three words. Compounds are just not limited to that. And hence, uh, to give an example, um, let's say the word bathroom towel rack. And then we can also talk about community center finance committee. So these are also, it's, it's a, uh, one word, but it has like more than just two words over there. Um, the process of compounding basically seems to be unlimited uh, in English as per uh, the um, point um, mentioned above. To give an example, if you were to talk about this word sailboat, now sailboat, sailboat word can really be expanded into different forms. It can be uh, expanded to sailboat rigging, it can be expanded to sailboat rigging design. 
then it can further be expanded uh, sailboat rigging design training or sailboat rigging design training institute and so on and so forth and so forth so this brings me to the fag end of my presentation these are the references which i took uh, while uh, reading the materials and most of my presentation i've taken from the last uh, class that sir had taken i listened to the recording uh, i also referred to some of the slides on slide share uh, as it's mentioned here so yes that's my presentation thank you okay, thank you ma'am uh, does anybody have question about compounding let's discuss if you have any confusion here <clears throat> and this is exactly what i also written in my reflection um in reflection three we able to add um, this is what i've understood so yes sumitra ma'am do you want to ask anything no sir anybody else anybody else the important one was uh, mostly uh, endocentric and exocentric right sorry the important ones were endocentric and exocentric right or are uh, all yeah. of them important yeah for now these two are right uh, because these two help us to find out meaning more classes as well that's why okay thank you sir all right <laughs> Uh, sir, uh, uh, exocentric is the one that where uh, it is not the it does not uh, give the literal meaning. Yes, right? so you're right. So, so that means even uh, black money is an example of exocentric <coughs> money. It's not. It's neither black. Yeah, uh, black money is not a money that is black. Is it so? No. No, is that, that is why it will come to the exocentric. Right? No, sir. Yeah, yeah. The exocentric. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, it's me, Prakash. Uh, I joined a bit later today, and yes, would yes, you sir. re elaborate about uh, assignment that we have to submit for the final? Okay. Uh, we are at the end of <clears throat> our assignments. We are, we have only two assignments: assignment one and assignment two. In assignment two, you are only supposed to write. Two answers. There are uh, some uh, two questions answered only. I mean, right? <clears throat> uh, uh, do you mean any particular question, or as a whole, Prakash sir? Sir, uh, I mean to say that what more do we need to do for the final assignment? I mean to say that about compounding or other all uh, other other sir. Now, now uh, from today's class onward, you are only supposed to write reflection, right? Yes, yes, sir. And next thing is, uh, you are supposed to write article or essay, whatever you call. Right? Maybe yes. you you don't you don't have a concept about article writing. If you don't have, simply write yes, essay on the topic you present in on the uh, uh, class, right? In the class. Simple. Okay, sir. Okay. Assignment one, okay. assignment two. Reflections of whatever we do in our class, right? Yes, and essay or article. For example, today Chitana Ma'am she brought a lot of thing. We don't need everything, right? But if you want to explore, right? If you want to research on this, you need to know many things, right? That's why uh, you can convert. For example, last time I sent you an article. Uh, this article <clears throat> refers somebody. For example, let me share my screen. <clears throat> Uh, for example, uh, processes. Look at here in this article. Maybe you have in your email. There are twelve processes. It, it doesn't mean that there are twelve processes, nine processes, four processes, right? According to who you have to mention this in. If you are writing article, right? If you are simply writing essay, uh, you can make your own ideas, right? You can merge them and you can make it. So <clears throat> now you don't have lot of thing. Only reflection. And if, uh, and you haven't sent me your class uh, AC on your classroom presentation, send that. You are free, and you can go back again and again to the uh, questions or to the assignment we have done. We can discuss. You can discuss with your friend. You can discuss with me. Uh, we can uh, explore in the internet, and you can make your assignment better, and you can deserve better 
grade as well. Is it okay, sir? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And you can send any, you can uh, again and again revisit your assignment at any time, right? Uh, because okay, that's much. We, we encourage, and as I said earlier also, as you are late, uh, in our university, what happens is that most of the teachers, they provide you lot of, uh, lots of assignment at the end of the uh, semester. That's why I, as, as, as I experienced earlier, the same thing. You, you, uh, we used to have a lot of things to do at the end of semester. That's why all of the assignments, my assignments, right, uh, were at the beginning, right? So you would be free. You can do other thing now. You are free now, right? And next thing, <clears throat> I have simplified the course, as I said earlier. Uh, uh, regarding compounding, don't be confused. Compounding is simply a process of word formation, not more than that. There are many classes, many types on many basis, right? According to uh, many scholars, don't be confused with that. Uh, simply, <clears throat> uh, you can talk about uh, what is compounding and mention processes. For example, uh, you can just simply write about that. For, for example, acronyms also, clipping also. These are also processes. They are minor processes. But uh, my intention was to inform you that there are or form, there are different criteria behind classifying them. For example, Chetana Ma'am said today, exocentric, um, uh, endocentric, copulative, appositive, and so many other, this is meaning based. For example, there are there were form based classification also there was, for example, single, single word, hyphenated, and separate word, this is form based classification, right? And there are item based classification also, noun plus bar, bar plus, or something, adjective, et cetera, et cetera, right? Refer one thing, simply, uh, mention form based or meaning based classification. And in meaning based, also, uh, you can simply mention uh, endocentric and exocentric, right? That's okay. Populative, appositive, this, that's not necessary uh, for us for basic understanding. And if you want to know more about this, you can mention that also. And if you follow form based classification using as a single word, right, or hyphenated word, and separate word, you can mention that, that's okay. And mention the processes we discussed in our last class, as I mentioned earlier, uh, <clears throat> that clipping, for example, uh, maybe uh, acronyms, for example. These are also minor processes of word formation. Sir, so how many processes are there in compounding? As I said uh, earlier, you follow one item. I, I sent you that article. Look at here, this article. Can you see this article? Yes, I checked that out. But last time I, I remember you mentioned the processes are blending acronyms. Yeah, you can mention that also. That, that's okay. Right? So I have, I have and submitted you simply two classes. For example, that is meaning based, uh, exocentric and endocentric as a major one. And for minor, you can mention them. That's also okay. Sir, but you have asked to resubmit the assignments again. Yeah. You simply, uh, as I said earlier also, if you want to, your writing, maybe your writing, your your presentation, right? Something other. Uh, you can improve and you can resubmit that. So, so how many processes uh, we have to, do we need to mention? Again, I said the same thing. You mentioned, for example, yeah, look at the slide over here. Which one format do you want to follow? For example, Jill Hunty and Gravy, that means a nine plus four plus 12. We want to follow these processes or these classes, endocentric and exocentric, following them. Do you want to follow this one? Either of these process, you write there and then mention the minor processes whatever we discuss in our slide, or simply based on the slide, you, I also talk about endocentric and exocentric in my last class. Do you remember? Yes, sir. Yes, you can mention yeah. and other uh, should be mentioned or can be mentioned under minor word classes, my, sorry, minor processes. These are the major processes, endocentric and exocentric. There is mentioned classes, but classes means these all are types or processes based on different criteria. Criteria, as I said earlier also, if you remember, exocentric, endocentric, copulative, these are meaning-based criteria, right? 
and form base also are there you can follow either of that or you can follow all of them it doesn't matter for example chetana ma'am brought a lot of thing form base for example use as a single word this is also process hyphenated you can hyphen you can put hyphen in between words this is also process you can use separate word also separate words can be used you can use that also there are different classification of processes based on different ideas as i mentioned meaning form item or word class etc okay you just mention what is the criteria for example if you uh, mention type remember or uh, listen me when you mention type you have to say what is the criteria of dividing into those types you mention and use any of them or all of them is not necessary to mention all of them as i said because it would be very long so use one of the classification as i mentioned in my last class exo and indocentric and next one is as i said minor food formation processes uh, coin is also you can you can see there right <clears throat> but coin is all are these all are not about word formation they are about uh, sorry uh, compounding they are about word formation processes that's why i send you this article this article did you get my point this coin is is not about uh, compounding all are not about compounding sir yes sir then can we just write about endo centric and exocentric yes okay those okay, clipping or others and others whatever is there they are about word formation other coin is also about word formation right is our formation don't be confused with that us so, uh, no under coin also know. there are compounding there can be compounding right if you find you can mention that also i mean to say that but yes sir indocentric exocentric or uh, better if you want to be pure linguistic one you just mention these nine processes of noun four processes of verb and 12 processes of adjective and side these uh, these writer right These are the exact linguistic processes on the word based on word class. We are talking about word class also now. That's why. So on... may I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. So, so who is going to do the word uh, word formation uh, part today? Sorry. Uh, what uh, the word formation also was there? Minor word classes, right? So who is going to do that uh, presentation today? Someone doing all today, today? There is nobody, I think. Only, only, only one. Oh, okay. 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 Any confusion? We can. And sir, one more thing, sir. Yeah. So one more thing, sir. So can you go to your page where you can actually access our assignments? Because uh, I think I wrote to you and uh, you said that there is a provision for us to resubmit the assignment. However, I didn't find because in your uh, particular you part, it's not, it doesn't say that we can remove technical person of Q. Sorry, do you have telephone number of technical? No, sir. I don't have. No, sir. Yeah, I don't know everything about this. Also, there is some of you are sending. I will ask with him also, and you can you can ask him. Jagadish is there, Jagadish sir, right? If you have any problem. uh you can yes sir but in in uh, in other teachers classes no sir in other teachers mm -hmm. classes like if we want to edit like um, they all if they want us to resubmit our assignment then they make a provision for us to um resubmit or um, you know uh, we can remove our previous assignment and uh, do a yes, resubmit yes you can remove also but i think it's some problem i will ask ask him and and yes, let's okay i don't yeah, know because we this. could not i check with other classmates also they also couldn't find so okay i'll i'll that's why right. sorry for the trouble sir though okay if if it is so i'll ask with him i don't know everything technicalities right sure sir thank you so much he he will uh, he will help me then and then then i'll help you later okay now <clears throat> maybe yeah, i think some of you are still in confusion are you in confusion about compounding as i said don't explore lot of thing is a word formation process compounding is and if you follow form base there are three classification that sing aging as a single word and hyphenated and separate word three criteria is and if you follow uh, based on the meaning exploration of meaning 
idiocentric, androcentric, copulative, appositive, right? And if you follow the word classes used, then there are four plus nine plus 12 criteria use uh, I, all of them or either of them, right? As a process, but you need to mention on which basis, meaning basis, form basis, right? Or world class basis. These are the processes about. Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Again. So, could you please? Um, uh, I think you have not uploaded the slide uh, that we that you used uh, for the class last time uh, regarding compounding. Compounding. Is it updated in the module? Yes, sir. If if not, I will upload today. Then it's okay. Right? Okay, sir. For Thank you, sir. I, right? Because uh, I liked okay. that slide better. Okay. Than the one that is in I'll the do, I'll meeting. do if not, right? I think I okay, thank you, sir. I will do today. So can you see my slide? Bob's. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. As I said, uh, from today onward, I'm not going to talk about that jargon like endocentric, exocentric, and so many other things. I'll I'll simply use the concept, right? Because some of you have problem. <clears throat> So we all know that. Uh, what is a verb? Can you tell me what is a verb? We did last time also, we tried to define under uh, word classes. What is it? Verb? The verbs are action words. Verb yes. is a doing word. Yes, action and doing. I think similar. Other, any other? Um, state of being. Yes. Next thing is the state of being. It tells us what is being uh, taking place. Okay, what is I happening? What is Sorry. It tells us what is happening or what is taking place. Yes. So, I have noted two points under the definition of verb, right? And I'll play a video, a video, right? It will tell you what a verb is, and then we'll proceed ahead. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's see what is there. The same video, similar type of video, and there is Indian tone. <laughs> No. Hello friends, my name is Nehir Mando. We will discuss all about verbs. So verbs are very important part in English and I would highly recommend you. Can you hear the sound? Yes, sir. Watch this video till yes. then as you will get to know the basics around verbs. Please take a pen or pencil and a book. If you find anything new, please write in it. Pause the video or rewind it if you don't get any concept. Okay, so let's get started. Firstly, let's quickly remember what we have covered in our previous videos. Do you remember this chart of parts of speech? I'm sure that you do. We have already covered about the first two parts of speech that is nouns and pronouns in our previous videos. Please check those videos if you haven't already or if you need to revise any of them. I have given the links in the description. In this video, we are going to discuss about the third and very important part of speech that is verbs. So let's begin. So what exactly is a verb? Verb is the main part of the sentence. Verb tells us two things about the subject, an action or activity performed by the subject or a state of being of the subject. So you can see two words here, action and state of being. In other words, state or situation of the subject. Let me give you some examples of action words. 
what is this boy doing in this image he is running right so run is a action verb what is this batsman doing he is playing so play is an action verb now let's look at the state of being type of verbs or also called as stative verbs they define the state of subject this is an image of a boy we say ram is a boy so is here is a state verb as it defines the state whether he is a boy or girl in this image the boy feels very tired so feels here is a stative verb as it defines the state of boy let's look into some sentence examples of them first let's see for action verbs first children reads book regularly here what is the action performed by children it is reading so read is an action verb second superman is flying in the sky here what is the action performed by superman it is flying so flying is an action verb third i ride bicycle regularly here what is the action that i perform with cycle it is riding so ride is an action verb now let's look into the state verbs they define the state or situation of subjects first she feels happy today here what is the state of girl it's feeling happy so feels is a state verb second i am a boy here how we define whether he is a boy or not using am as a state verb third he is a policeman here the state of that person is that he is a police so is is used verb here so remember verbs tell about the action or state of subject now verbs are mainly divided into two parts main verbs and auxiliary verbs or helping verbs so what are main verbs main verbs are the words that actually shows the action or activity of subject they can stand alone without the help of any other verbs examples of them are read sleep eat run all the okay look at here uh is going to talk about or is going to talk about uh main verbs we all know that is very simple right uh, what is the function of main verb here action or activity of subject the common function for example read sleep right eat and next this is the first category of types of verb i'm going to talk about other also uh, commonly uh, verbs can be divided into two types uh, main verb and helping verbs uh, helping verbs from its name also you can guess what does it do helping or you know the meaning of auxiliary also right i am going to talk about this also auxiliary uh, is it also means uh, helping helps especially helps main verb and there are some verbs uh, or helping verbs that can be used as a main verb also so we'll talk about this let's see uh, main verb again and auxiliary verb these verbs can exist independently and provide complete meaning to the sentence let me give you some sentence examples of them sun shines here what is the activity of sun it is shining so shines is a main verb here bus stops here what is the action bus performs it is to stop so stops is a main verb here car runs here what is the activity or action performed by the car it is running so run is a main verb here now let's look into auxiliary verbs or helping verbs they give more meaning to the main verb they cannot stand alone which means 
they require main verb for their existence examples of them are is has do did these are referred to as main helping verbs and will shall may can could might must these are called modal auxiliary verbs let me give you sentence examples to make you clear about them for the first example we are using helping verb may look at this sentence bus may can you understand what this sentence is saying about bus bus may what now look at the complete sentence bus may stop here we are telling that bus may stop that is we are not sure whether it will stop or not but it is giving complete meaning to the sentence so helping verb is may here and main verb is stop let's look into the second example will now look at this sentence sita will does this statement convey any meaning about the subject sita no it doesn't now look at the complete sentence sita will come here we have used come which is the main verb with will as a helping verb now let's look into the last example must now look at this sentence they must here the verb must is of no meaning to the sentence if it is not followed by any main verb now look at this sentence they must eat now we have a meaningful sentence conveying that they must eat the food here must is a helping verb and eat is a main verb that's all in this video let's quickly go through what we have learned Firstly we discussed about verbs and what they tell about the subject they tell two things about the subject the action that subject performs and the state in which subject is currently in then we discussed about two main types of verbs main verbs and auxiliary or helping verbs that's all in this video thank you for watching the video Okay. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. 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 The, the kinds of auxiliary verb. There were two kinds. Uh, can you say it? Okay. Okay. You can. You can go ahead. What do you want to say, sir? Please go on, sir. Uh, sir, there are, there are two kinds of auxiliary verbs. So, what are they, sir? Okay, auxiliary verb is add to come, right? We are talking about main verb only, right? There is a separate separate section. Later, I'll discuss about this. Okay, is it okay, sir? Okay. So let's okay. see. Okay. First, uh, our uh, intention here is to define verb. Uh, what is a verb? One main thing is this. Uh, let's see uh, what is written in this slide and can you tell me on the basis of that video also what is it what does a verb do in a sentence it shows it, the speed and action uh, it anybody else want to add something on this what does a verb do as he said uh, one is stat another is doing or we discuss uh, the, sorry what does a describes, verb do? it describes it describes what the subject is doing and in what like and state in which the subject is currently in yes it informs us basically sir the verb also informs us as it's mentioned in your slide it informs us about the action or the state uh, a person is in so in a sentence uh, generally 
there will be subject and verb an object is optional right not always mandatory so you need to relate uh, verb with subject verb tells two things about subjects right one is what the subject is doing or in which state or condition the subject is did you get my point here verb is not only doing yes act, sir right yes sir. it is state word also now but traditionally in traditional grammar uh, it is it used to be defined as a act, as an action word but now we have to relate verb with subject also and we have to say two thing one is what the subject is doing or in which situation or state the subject is so in this sense verb is a doing word that shows an action or an event or a state state of the subject right not of anything else subject so you can see i play football the person i right you can say please football do you action is playing the flower are bright this is in condition not activity they on the quiz so these two are the main functions of verb still get it once again uh, example jacob beats on his drum all day person doer is here jacob who what does jacob do the thing the activity the person is doing is what eating this is verb to verb is bits and it's what jacob doing so bits is doing verb here right action word here in this way uh, we can again categorize verb into different types uh, as chetan ma'am brush lots lots and lots of types of compounding and there are lots and lots kinds of verbs also so for our classroom purpose i have brought mainly four types uh, main verb uh, we was the video right main verb means action or state verbs both can be main verb and you can say they exist themselves and auxiliary verb right and next one is transitive verb and intransitive verb we'll discuss later finite and non finite and some scholar call infinite also but commonly we call non finite verbs regular and irregular verb is based on form today we are going to talk about these four uh four types <coughs> of verb i got these pictures in internet that's why for your common visualization of visual understanding i put it here you can see lexical main or full verb and auxiliary verb helping verb you can see types primary auxiliary you can see to be have and do and modal auxiliaries as some of you were asking about types primary for auxiliary primary auxiliary verb for main auxiliary verb and modal auxiliary verb and transitive under transitive also there are type we are not going to talk about that let's see again <clears throat> main verb or action verb see it, they are also called main verb action verb and dynamic verb so these types of verb express action 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 of maybe animal a person or a thing does 
it means subject forget about other thing actions of or activity of uh, subject for example sun signs for example you can see it's a thing and signs verb you can see there are you listening yes sir yes sir the action action or sneeze animal you can see monkey also you can see what does monkey do so it's very simple you all are teaching at a school level also you don't i think i should have problem about me. the one thing you need to remember about main verb is they can exist themselves it means they have their own meaning uh and they are dynamic also uh action they perform is is really you need to correlate this with subject right it talks about subject it tells about subject and they can exist themselves and can be uh okay let's see steady bob is it time okay we have still half an hour and here is one link i think you have this slide also uh before we talk about stative verb stative verb can also be main verb right uh let's go to one side uh i'll send you this in your chat room uh let's visit this and discuss about this is it okay yes sir Uh, do you have slide with you right now yes sir so the slide that you sent yeah yes sir there is a link if you don't have you can use from your chat room in the first page yeah in the chat room also yes sir, it's there a link right uh just uh, for 5 minutes log on to the link that site and read about stative verb is a site a bit itself can you see my uh desktop is we yes sir okay, this did uh, could uh, did you yes it's visible the stay so we cannot open it from the link Maybe you copied that uh, uh, bracket also. Yeah, uh, but we can see it in on your desktop, sir. We can see it okay. like you are showing it, no? So we can see it on the. Okay, is okay. Read this then. Some grammar explanation. Please read out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Whenever you will finish reading, let me know. Then we can resume again our discussion. Sir, so I finished. Now I'm doing the task. So test. Oh, are you doing test also? Okay. You do test also, and we'll discuss. There are two tests. Test one and then test two. You can see your score also. Do only test one and you can do test one later at your home. In mail, I didn't find the this slide that are showing. So there is only what is verb. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. The link, the link that you sent in. Okay, I got the link, sir. Uh, second one. Yes, second one. So I have done. Okay. So I've also finished doing the test also, both. The okay, then let's <clears throat> uh, start from Asruful, sir. Can you define steady Bob? What is it? Sir. What is steady Bob? Uh, it's a type of verb that uh, just uh, describe a uh, state of something. That describe? Uh, a state of uh, being okay. uh, or a state of being something. Okay. Okay. While defining Bob, uh, we uh, noted two points, right? One is doing or action. Next one is state of being. State of being of subject or doing or action of subject, right? Don't forget subject here. So state of verb are also main verb, right? Don't, uh, uh, main verbs, there are two types of main verbs. Yes, sir. Yeah, one is doing or action words. They are also main verb. Next one is Stative verbs, they are also 
men bob but function yes, are different right uh here you can see yes definition a state of bob is one that describe a state of being in contrast to dynamic bob dynamic means yeah and it means doing words doing bob or action bob right yes sir so you, yes uh, i think you you saw these things also uh, on that piece right steady bobs uh yes sir for relate to thought and opinion right verbs are telling yes an opinion for example agree believe doubt guess imagine and so on you can see list uh, here and there are other also not only many long list can be there feeling and thought emotion right for example like dislike hate love prefer and so on uh sense and perception appear be feel hear and other and position and measurement according to that uh these and there are other above also there can be a very long list not only these right so you can see category thought and opinion uh, feeling and emotion senses and perception uh, position and measurement these are a major category of steady verb and commonly steady verb uh state about state of being of the subject uh but uh, as i said earlier this is english it's not mathematics in even math in mathematics there can be exception it has also exception uh, you saw the same example on that phase some verb can be some verbs can be steady verb also dynamic verbs dynamic means here uh, action verb also for example have i have an old car you get the meaning of this have the possession i have an old car but the same have can be used as an action i'm having a quick break you get here having a break is an activity activity verb or dynamic verb the action here not the step see this bob do you see any problem with that opinion is used in the sense of opinion here right you can see opinion we see and next see we are seeing uh tandoori tomorrow afternoon tandoori here is action seeing this is this seeing means we are meeting him b he is so interesting step his attribute or quality you can see here he is being very unhelpful you can see action here he is being unhelpful so it's not a temporary activity quality right here a permanent one is a temporary one right now so similarly you can see a test and there are so many other verb and there can be more than these also which can be used as action word action verb dynamic verb or activity verb or state verb so these are exceptional cases uh, which we are supposed to remember there been confusion about state verb now i talk about no sir what is verb right don't be confused if you have paper and pen please write down what is a verb and next one is first type of verbs main verb and main verb can further be divided into one a doing verb action verb dynamic verb don't be confused with the terminologies used and next one is state verb state of being and you know that verb tells about the activity or the state of 
subject right okay uh, now uh, we have to start auxiliary verb okay let's have a break right uh, we'll resume our class at 6 uh, 6 pm is it okay it is now 5 yes, sir. 5.45, okay. we'll meet at 6. And if you want to know more about Excelis Bob, and if you don't need break, you just search in the internet and we can discuss later. And if not, you can have a break. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. Excuse me. ma'am. Uh, sir, I leave. Uh, you just, uh, Azur, you just mentioned, sir, that they are, uh, uh, mentioned two questions, right, sir? What is a verb and what is a main verb? And when you talked about main verbs, you talked about action, doing, state, and I missed out the fourth one, sir. Dynamic verb. I mean, there are only two. Main verb, under main verb, there are two types of verb. One is, is, okay, remember. Dynamic, action. Azur, Azur. Dynamic. Doing word, you can say doing word, action also, right? These are same. Doing, act, doing and action action. word or dynamic verb, these are same. Next one is state, state verb. Only two types. Okay. State or stative? Uh, state yes, or state. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Sir, how much time we will get for break? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, sir. 15. Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir. Yes. Uh, uh, sir, how can I uh, improve my assignment? Um, so, I had written to you. I have given you some feedbacks, for example, uh, maybe in your Moodle. Uh, did, did you uh, look the feedback? No, I did not see any feedbacks in mine. It just showed uh, the marks, but then I did not see the feedback, sir. Okay. Or maybe I don't know how to see it. Let me show you. It's a public one. That's why it's better to talk individually. Is it okay, ma'am? <laughs> okay, sir. Or do you want to see it? Um, maybe I'll talk to you later. Okay. I actually don't mind if even if you show it, sir. It's okay, you can show it here. Can you see my slide here? My uh, no, sir. Okay. Let me see. You're not sharing the screen. Okay. It's a problem here. Yeah, sorry. I can see your slide now. So is my work very childish? <laughs> Your writing is somehow yes, sir. not. So somehow I don't know how to. Critical. Yes. Just keep on writing. You don't have anything. Yes, you just keep on writing. Keep on writing. I'll give you feedback and you can improve. It's okay. You don't have anything now. No assignment. Okay, sir. My side. Right? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I just want to know uh, what I missed out and how can I is improve on that. Your this one? Yes, sir. This one. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've mentioned some distinct... Oh, no, I did not. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not see the feedback. Yes, you can see. Okay. 
So, um, sorry, let me check from, from my own module. I don't, I think I don't know how to use it. I'll just try once. Okay. Okay. Because I tried to, um, I tried to check my feedback, but then I did not see anything. Oh yes, sir. I can see it now. I can. Yes. I yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. This is okay. It's okay, ma'am. Uh, excuse me, Kumar, sir. Hello? Rajinder, sir, are you saying sir, anything? Yes. Uh, so I would like to know uh, how will, uh, uh, what would be the formats of our final paper? Like, uh, would it be something uh, like uh, similar to assignment or would, do we have to come to campus to give our final uh, paper? Uh, maybe uh, there we be the similar situation as right now this corona pandemic have online examination open book yes and if okay. we can we can go to our college university right and sit for examination you will be you will have written examination of 100 marks okay the question will be similar as we are doing right now for example Okay. So what is like the, the percentage uh, for the final uh, term paper? Is it 50% or? Yeah, 50%, 50-50. Okay. All right. And also I was looking through the assignment. I don't see the, the you, you gave me the initial feedback, um, but for my last submission, uh, I didn't see any further uh, feedback. Uh, so I was wondering if I needed to improve. Okay, I'll I'll say tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll give you. Okay, I think I forgot. All right. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me, Kumar, sir.
Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, I'm Bhuvan Ayer. Um, so last time uh, that was inflexional and derivational. That was uh, that was my presentation. And about the same topic, I have uh, submitted you for that assignment. So shall I to write a different another essay on the same topic? Mm -hmm. What shall I do, sir? Uh, you just make in essay format. Just convert into essay format. The same thing. You just operate. Make an just like an same article. Thing, I have. Mm -hmm. uh, does it have any word limit, sir? No, it doesn't have. You can see uh, the. I think there is one document. Uh, there's no word limit. You can elaborate the thing you have men uh, you have written there. Okay. Okay. Sir. Uh, what is that? Uh, word limit twenty presentation. Okay, there's no word limit at all. Uh, you can just elaborate and make uh, uh, or convert it to in, into an AC format. And sir, um, for compounding, I just take mine assignment. Uh, so shall I to? I think I should really submit it again. Uh, that compounding to... part, uh, since you have said about those processes like endocentric or ex <laughs> that I forgot. So um, uh, and sir, one more thing that I want to tell you is uh, the day before yesterday, you sent one email, sir, right? Yeah. And oh. Uh, Sir, uh, that says it is not safe to uh, go to that link. So, uh, should we to try that link, sir? That is, I think that is about uh, what is Bob. I think link is about Bob. It's not okay. necessary. That, that is, is about Bob. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, last time, yes, yes. Last week you sent it. Uh, so we check that uh, out and resend that compounding part, sir. Mine, I think mine, I my assignment is not for to. As per to your expectation, sir. Yeah, yeah. I, my expectation is to include the type as I uh, showed you earlier, right? Processes, yes. for example, noun, verb, uh, adjective, mm -hmm. etc. Right? That yes, is sir. my expectation. So we have to rework on it. Yeah. Yes. If you could rework, and some of you have simply mentioned acronym. And so, uh, something, something like that, right? They are word formation process. Okay, yeah, that no. also. I also did the same. Yeah, I, I now I remember. Yeah. Okay, sir, so uh, it doesn't have any um, due dates, right? Yeah, there is no due date at all. Any time you can submit. Yes. Because although now, we have submitted in email uh, form, you have graded it. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, it's okay. So uh, we we will get um, great improvement, sir. If we submit it, yeah, it's because... better if you if you can upload up, uh, upload in your Moodle, it is better, right? If you cannot, you but can email you know, us. Like Tim and I said, we can't do it. Yeah, it's okay. There is no option for yeah. resubmitting. Yeah, yeah, you you can send email by email also. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, let's. Again, um, excuse me, sir. Rajan, sir, are you saying something? Hello. Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes sir. Uh, I, I kind of like. I think I missed the. Uh, what What were you saying with regards to the essay format? Uh, so, was that something you our, want us to do? Yeah. In our intention is when you present something, if you convert your presentation into article format, that is our optimum. Uh, what uh, uh, desire, and if you okay. convert it into essay format, maybe uh, uh, Lakshman sir is teaching you about uh, essays. Uh, follow that format and convert your presentation uh, into an essay. So those students who have who have given their presentation, then yeah. it, it would be applicable for those. But since uh, some of us have not given our presentation, it does not apply to us, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's summarize. Astrupal, sir, are you saying something? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes. Uh, would you mind checking your, I have mailed uh, assignment two yeah. to you. And, you uh, could you please uh, suggest me uh, how to upgrade my assignments? Okay, I will give you feedback there. 
Is it okay, sir? Oh, oh okay, sir. It will be great. Thank you, sir. After reading, and one, one more thing, sir. Uh, is it flexible whether uh, we will submit uh, article or essay, or we should only write essays on our, on the thing that we have presented in the class? Yeah, you can convert into article also, right? Uh, you can it can be research and, also, or you can simply write is, essay, essay only. Essay. If not, uh, sir, is there any length for word limit or no, no. something no like this criteria? All. No word limit. It's up to you. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm going to again uh, revise the same thing. I talk about one thing. Can you see my slide? Yes, sir. Okay. See. What is a verb? I talk about this. And okay, you can include two things. One is, what is one? Can you summarize? Main verb. Main verb. Doing. Doing. And dynamic. And dynamic. Action. Action. Dynamic. Dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, stative, sir. Sorry? Stative. Second, one. second one is stative. And second one is? Stative or stative? Stative. Or stative. Being, right? Of a subject. Of a subject. I don't miss this thing. Doing also, or doing word is also, action word is also, and dynamic word is also same. These three uh, terms are same. Don't be confused. I used last time. And state of being or stative, right? State of subject or state of being of subject is also same thing. So you need to incorporate uh, along with this, you need to include what subject of subject, right? It's the same uh, different thing. Don't, let's, let me include here of, of subject. So this is valve. And the first category or type of verb, main verb, mm -hmm. uh, auxiliary verb, process, auxiliary verb, is right. Uh, verb. Uh, we were talking about this, and next one is main verb can also be. Uh, categorize into two types on the basis of these things, same thing you can see action or a stat. Mean Bob, uh, stats about action or state, right? You got this main Bob here. Me go back. See this main verb, sign, nays, jumps, right? Uh, they talk about action and steady verb, state. We talk about this third opinion, feeling and uh, feeling and emotion, sense and perception, possession and measurement, right? You got idea. And some verb can be steady also, dynamic also. For this, you have to remember, you have to memorize. There's no other way. Now, let's start uh, auxiliary verb. These two are broad criteria of dividing verbs. Main verb and auxiliary verb. So you all know that. What's the function of auxiliary verbs? They help main verb to get the real meaning full meaning and mostly auxiliary verb they don't have their own meaning from the name also you can say let's see see here helping verb helping helps no meaning on their own right this is for grammatical structure of sentence so there are two types as Asrupasar asked earlier, 
primary primary be verb do verb and have verb one thing we need to remember about this primary helping verb is that they can be used sometime as a main verb also and helping verb also can you give example be verb do verb and have verb uh, using as main verb main versus helping in case of be do and have these verb these uh, auxiliary verbs they can be used as main verb also and helping verb also they are prime can you give me some example Yes, sir. I can so, give. Okay. Okay. One by one, please. B. Uh, yes. Uh, like I'm. I'm a teacher. Yeah, you want so, to do. And, I am a. Right. I'm a teacher. I, I am a, a, a teacher. teacher. So M is your main verb. Yes. Um, but I am. Uh, I am learning grammar. I am. learning learning grammar grammar so m is helping learn main verb but okay. in the first sentence m is a principal verb or main verb yes you're right next participant next person about do we will try uh can i yes ma'am do mm, do okay I, i forgot so i forgot the sentence let me just uh, think uh, just a second is there anybody who is prepared yes uh, sir I, i'm prepared <laughs> okay okay I did my homework i did my homework i did my homework okay put as the did yeah and next sentence helping verb helping verb i did not do my homework i did not do my okay right let me write s w only okay so the second okay, ditch is let, let, let's yes. talk about have okay sir i have a friend please sir i have a coffee shop i have a shop i am having a cup of coffee i am having a cup of coffee having a cup of coffee okay so uh, you know the difference between these two right this did for example and this do for example and this one and this have and this having right so now i will talk about the forms of verb later right uh, but right now also let's see you know uh, main verb or verb have how many forms uh, do they have form b1 b2 five forms how many five 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 forms can you change these three verb into five forms for example b1 or uh, v2 uh v3 so v4 and v5 mm -hmm. can you change v1 because any verb that we can use as a main verb she, she, 
she teaches she teaches grammar b1 of or i teach grammar b1 of m b1 of is m did or do b1 is m b2 is uh, was b3 Beans. Which one? Beans. Beans, sir. Bean. 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 This one? Bean. Bean. Yes, sir. Bean. Bean. Uh, B for bean. And B5 is. Yes. Is. is. And there's another form of B. Uh, one is B itself. Another? Can you add any? Another B1 also. B1. R. 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 Yes. B2 is uh, another? Word. Word. Sir. Word. Where? Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, uh, the ma main verb. I am having a cup of coffee. Actually, I didn't. I did a mistake. It should be, I have had a cup of coffee. I have had a cup of coffee. I have had. That's also okay. It's also okay. I am sure. having it also. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's a uh, main verb, sir. I am having a cup of coffee there. I have I had. I am yeah. having a cup of coffee. That, that having is main verb, sir. Yes. This is main verb. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So, so it's better if we say, I have had. I have. Yes, it's also okay. Had a cup of coffee. Okay, I'll paste this here. And you know the other form of this did and have also. It's not difficult, right? So my intention here is to talk about the forms of verb, especially these three primary auxiliaries verb. And you know, their use also, we're not talking about use. Uh, you need to follow grammar book. So for making negative, for example, making question, for example, right? We use, we need auxiliary verb. For example, you can see simple yes, no question. We use be verb. Is your brother uh, taller than you? Where they simply we invert this is called inversion. We inver uh, just change the position of subject and helping Bob. Yeah. You can see here uh, uses and very simple childish exercise. Uh, Bob, which one is suitable here in number one first? Do. Do you want T? E? He has given his all. He has given. C? She, 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 is, the she is the boss. She is the boss. Very simple use of uh, primary auxiliary. And next one is modal auxiliary verb. You know, modal auxiliaries, what is this? Can you tell me something about modal auxiliaries? What type of auxiliary is called modal auxiliary? May, might, must, can, could, will. Why they are called modal auxiliary? Any idea? Because it's a, it talks about a kind of a possibility. A possibility, yeah. ability, yeah. permission, and obligation, right? So it means they indicate modality. Likelihood, ability, permission, and obligation. So for uses, you have to follow the grammar book. We are not going to talk about this. Uh, our intention is simply to get idea of auxiliaries, two types of auxiliaries, modal auxiliaries, basic or primary auxiliaries. 
Okay, let's see the another type, transitive and intransitive. This is the next type of verb. Do you have any idea about transitive and intransitive verb? Can you say what is transitive? Yes, I see, uh, I see a bird. So C is a transitive because it has an object. Yes. And in transitive, the baby sleeps. Uh, the baby sleeps, there is no object. So that is in transitive. Can you again explain the second one? Baby sleeps. And it's in, in sleep is in transitive. Why? Can you say again? Because there is no no object. Yes. Uh, we ask any. Okay. Uh, that is the thing. Hello, friends. Okay, once again, let's welcome to free watch grammar this video. It will talk about this. Today we are going to learn transitive and intransitive verbs. Can you hear the sound? Yes, sir, yes. we can hear. Okay. We have already discussed about verbs and its main two types. Please watch that video if you haven't already or need a revision. Links for that are in the description. In this video, we will be learning transitive and intransitive verbs. So without a further go, let's get started. Let's first quickly remember what we have already learned about subject, object and verbs. Let's understand it with an example. Rubina is eating a pizza. Here, who is the doer of the action? Rubina. So, Rubina is a subject here. And what is the action performed by Rubina? Eating. So, it's a verb. And what she is eating? Or who is at the receiver end? Pizza. So, it's an object. Please note, to identify any object, we use what or whom question. In this case, we used what to identify the object. Please also check the lessons from parts of speech after this video for detailed understanding about this topic. Links for all related videos are in the description. Now that you are clear with what is subject, object and verb, let's look into the main topic of today, which is transitive and intransitive verbs. So what is a transitive verb? Transitive verb is action that have a direct object to receive that. So it's an action verb with a direct object. Let's look into a sentence example to make things clear. The man love his children. Love here is the action performed by the man, which is a subject in this case. And it has a receiver, which is children. As the man is the subject who is doing the action of love and it has a direct object, children, so it's a transitive verb. Let's look into some more sentence example having transitive verb. The doctor cured him. Here, cured is the action and him is the direct object. So it's a transitive verb. Let's look into next example. She crossed the street. Here, crossed is the action and street is the direct object. So, it's a transitive verb. Let's look into one more example to make things even clear. Rohan kicked the ball. Here, kicked is the action performed by Rohan. And ball is the direct object on which the action is performed. So, it's a transitive verb. Now that we are cleared, about transitive verb, let's look into intransitive verb. So what is the intransitive verb? Intransitive verb is action that doesn't have a direct object to receive that action. So it's an action verb without a direct object. Let's look into a sentence example to make things clear. Snow fell yesterday. Here snow is the subject and fell is the action. But we cannot say the snow fell on whom. In other words, there is no direct object to receive the action. So it's an intransitive verb. Let's look into some more sentence examples 
having intransitive verbs we failed here failed is intransitive verb as there is no direct object linked with it let's look into next example she is sleeping here sleeping is intransitive verb as there is no direct object linked with she let's look into one more example of intransitive verb to make things even clear they work hard here also work is intransitive verb as there is no direct object after the verb work so i think you are now clear about intransitive verb that's all about transitive and intransitive verb let's quickly revise what we have learned in this video firstly we discussed what is the subject object and verb with the help of an example then we discussed what is transitive verb it is an action verb with a direct object finally we discussed what is intransitive verb it is an action verb without any direct object so that's all in this video thank you for watching the video if you have okay do you get the idea hello friends my name is nihir mandoura i about transitive verb yes sir sir what is it then so transitive verb is a verb uh, which ha where a verb has a subject an intransitive verb the verb will not have any subject uh, object or will i mean if there are any object or other things it will be indirect there is no direct object okay and did you note the point for example the speaker in the video said uh verb should be action verb right not the state verb one and there should be receiver our uh, receiver of action means object and you need to ask question and there should be questions of uh what and whom if you ask this question with verb then that is transitive did you note down the point i said look at look at here see transitive verbs yes, action verb is one thing right and there should be receiver of action receiver of action means object right and is always noun it should be noun object i mean and next thing if you ask wh square what question and whom question then if you find answer that is transitive verb these are the testing kits for that okay look at here some example i think the video made you clear or told you a lot of thing rohan greeted the visitor rohan greeted whom the action greeted pass from subject rohan to the object visitor if you ask question whom you will get the visitor that's the answer right when will uh, felicia paint her room the action will paint pushes from the subject felicia to the subject room right paint what ask question or if you ask whom question right then you need to get the answer i mean to say as i said earlier so here also the same thing applies the action is there paint so let's see here again see the sentences two sentences are there the teacher made the question paper uh teacher got the cake in first question sorry sorry and in the in the first sentence if you ask question made there is made what question paper you will get answer if you ask question the same question in case of second sentence what what action these are action word made and what and you will get answer what what Cake made what? Question paper, right? And these are called direct object. It means transitive verb means direct object. Now, otherwise, 
it is intransitive. And in case of intransitive, uh, you just go to the vice versa and you would get the idea, right? Uh, object present, object absent. Present means transitive, absent means intransitive. And see here, what is intransitive? The express action or tell something about the subject without the action passing to a receiver or object. It means action is not passed to the object or receiver. There won't be receiver in intransitive. It means there won't be object simply, in simple sense. So intransitive verbs may be either action or linking verbs or a state verb. Okay, you can see here, rain is stopped. There's no object. There's no receiver of action. It means receiver of action. Remember this, receiver of action. What is action? Stopped, rain stopped. Or what? For example, last night we ate on the air. Ate what is not there? Only add is prepositional phrase, not object. So, in case of intransitive of, there won't be any object. Object means receiver of action. Do you have any question? Any confusion? Let's practice here, it will be clear. Children play checkers. Transitive or intransitive? Which one? Transitive. Transitive, sir. Yeah. What? Play what? There's yes. A, right? But in seconds, play quietly. Play what? Quietly? Is that answer? Transitive. No. No. Lopez is baking bread. Baking what? Bread. Bread. Is that answer? Yes. Baking means what? Is it bread. Baking bread. So there's answer. But in example, he is baking this afternoon. Baking what? Is there answer? No. 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 Did you get the concept of transitive and intransitive now? Having direct. Yes, sir. Having receiver of action, right? And to be transitive, the verb should be what? Action word. To be intransitive, it can be action word also, a linking or a static verb also. So this is what, so here also you can practice. Melina ate a baked potato. Eat what? Is the answer? A baked potato. potato. Yes, baked that potato. Means, that means transitive or intransitive? Transitive. Transitive. Uh, Hector and Tom are reading. Reading what? Is there answer? Is there answer? No. No means? No, no sir. No means? In intransitive. They painted the house. Painted what? The house? Is that? House, the house. Is that there is there answer? Is this answer? The answer or not? Sir, but in number two we have answer for who? In That's number two, ob sir. Object. Objectiveless. Uh, oh. Actor and terms are subjects. Right? They are doer. Yes, yes, I got it. Receiver of action. Did you get my point? Receiver of Yes, sir. Not the doer. Right? Uh, did you carry his suitcase? Carry what? Suitcase. suitcase. My plant grows. grows what? Plant. This is receiver. This is the receiver of action. Plant is subject. So, mm -hmm. object. In this way, in transitive. Uh, you know. Ask question, what question and whom question with subject? One, 
there should be receiver of action to receiver of action, not the subject, object. And next one is to be transitive, verb should be action verb. Action verb. In uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so the same verb can, it seems like can be transitive. Uh, yes, here. and intransitive. Yeah, there are uh, cases. Yeah. Same verb can like be Like here, like I grow my plants. Yeah. Yes. Uh, is there not like exclusive, like transitive and intransitive verb? Like for example. Yeah, is there, they, are, they are not mutually exclusive, right? Yeah, they are inclusive. As in other cases, same verb, okay. transitive also, intransitive also. There are exceptional cases. Okay. So you can search. Right, answer. All right, thank you. Okay. okay, now I think you got basic concept. If you want to know more about this, there are hundreds and hundreds of things, right? Uh, let's not be confused. Let's let's get basic idea, right? Our intention is to get basic idea. Now let's move into finite and non-finite verb. Have you heard about this? Finite. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you give me concept of this? May I? What is finite verb then? Finite bar. The finite that follows the verb that follows subject and tense. Like um, I, I, I did my homework. So did is uh, did past form and also following the verb, following the subject, and I, I like, I like to travel the uh, travel in the world. I like to travel the world. So to travel is non-finite because to travel is not following subject or tense. Okay, good. Uh, here is one one p paper. Right, I would like to show you. Okay, let's not share. I'd like to just open. Uh, let's go through this and discuss about this. Which MP. Can you see? See my desktop? Yes, so we can see. Okay, please read, read for a while, uh, just for five minutes, and we'll discuss about finite and non-finite verb.
Are you reading? Yes, sir. Is it over? I didn't get sound. Is it over? Sir, last part is not. Yes, sir, finished. We are only fifteen now, fourteen. I think you got the basic concept. What is finite? See the first sentence here, a sentence, there is normally at least one verb that has both a subject and a tense. You can see here. And when a verb has a subject and a tense, it can be referred to as a finite verb. We want, I like, I shall. Maybe you, you read this, uh, a paragraph also. Some of the verbs are referred to as a non-finite. The present and the past participle and the two infinitive are common of this. And the base form is often used in a non-finite way. What does this mean? Even verb can be used in a clause in an either finite or non-finite way. The, look at the first use here. A verb is finite if it is found in a clause in a combination with subject and a tense. What does this mean? For example, I walked. We saw. They appreciate. And this one is finite or non-finite. See here. What does it say? It is non-finite if it is used to the condition number one without a verb having a tense. For example, open is verb. It is in two infinitive form. And it does not have what? Subject also. And what next? Subject also. Tense, tense also. For example, looking. Looking is also verb. It has no subject, no tense. And this looking is called present participle, right? Worn out. It has no tense. It, does it mean past tense? No, worn out means. It's not, it is, it is past participle form, but it has no subject and no tense. So without, without verb having a tense. Next one is with no agreement between sub, if there Excuse is. Me, Yes, sir. Uh, so can't we say like being worn out by the heat or being worn out by the heat uh, to add some uh, tense? Being worn out by? The heat. They stop for a drink or being this one? in the past tense. So you can, you, you can yes. take it back if we do also. that, then. Yeah. Initial position also, final position, both are acceptable. Okay. And no subject means no agreement. You know that, right? And let's see uh, uh, one uh, video. It will 
clear you and I will show my slide also. I think you have basic concept about this. Again, the similar type of video is here. Let me play and let's discuss then if you have any confusion. Hello, between finite verbs and non-finite verbs. Verbs are mainly divided into two parts, main verbs and auxiliary verbs. We have already discussed that division in our parts of speech series. Please go and check it. If Can you hear the sound? Yes, sir. If you haven't already or need a revision, links are in the description. Yes, sir. In this video, we will be discussing one more classification of verb that is finite and non-finite verbs. So without a further go, let's get started. A finite verb is a verb that has a finite or limited agreement with the subject. What does it mean? It limits its usage as per subject's parameter. There are three defined parameters on which this limitation is fixed. First is tense, that is the subject is performing action in past, present or future tense. Second person, that is the subject is first person, second person or third person. And third is the number, that is the subject is singular or plural. So a finite verb will change as per the tense of the sentence, as per the person and as per the number of subject. Okay, did you get the concept here? We were talking about tense only and agreement. Here are other things, right? In clear form, tense one, person. First person, Second number. Second person, third person, and next one is number, right? So finite verb, what happens in there? They indicate their chains on this basis. Now let's understand each of these parameters with the help of an example. Examples of verb that change as per tense. That is whether the sentence is a present tense, past tense or future tense. I play cricket every day. This sentence is in present tense. Here the verb is play. Let's look into another sentence. I played cricket yesterday. This sentence is in past tense. Here the verb is played. You can see here that the verb play changed to played as per the tense. So both play and played are finite verbs. Now that you are clear how finite verb change as per tense, let's look into the example. Do you have any question about that? Confusion? Finite verb or verbs change as, as per tense. It means it indicates or they indicate tenses, right? Of verb that change as per person. That is, it change as per the subject is in first, second or third person. I run a mile daily. The subject I is in first person. Here the verb is run. Now let's look into another sentence. He runs a mile daily. Here the subject he is in third person and the verb is runs. You can see here that the verb run changed to runs as per the person. So both run and runs are finite verb. Now that you are clear how finite verb change as per person, let's look into the example of verb that change as per number. That is the subject is singular or plural. Apple is of red color. The subject apple is singular. Here the verb is is. Now let's look into another sentence. Apples are of red color. The subject apples is in plural form. Here the verb is are. You can see here that the verb is chained to are as the subject chain from singular to plural. Now we are clear that the finite verb change as per tense 
person and number let's now look into non okay does anybody have any question about this confusion finite verb shows changes as part tense changes as person and number you know tense means here person means first second third number means singular and plural as you saw in the example in this video anything can we go ahead Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Let's finite see. verbs. So, what is a non-finite verb? Non-finite verbs don't have any agreement with the subject. That is, they are not limited as per the change in the subject. It doesn't change as per tense or as per person or as per number. They doesn't change as per the tense or as per the person or as per the number of subject. in the sentence and they don't perform any action in the sentence first let's understand it with an example then we will understand their role in the sentence i found his office at a walking distance here the subject is in singular form and the sentence is in past form there are two verbs here found and walking let's look into another example akash will find his office at a walking distance here the subject is singular and the sentence is in future form here also there are two verbs find and walking now you can see that one verb found changed to find but the other verb walking didn't change in both the cases and doesn't function as a main verb in the sentence so it's a non finite verb now that we are clear what are non finite verbs let's understand their usage non finite verbs functions as noun adjective or adverb in the sentence they do not function as verb in the sentence that we just understood now let's understand their functionality as an adjective with an example the sleeping cat is brown here sleeping functions as adjective in the sentence as it is describing cat now Let's understand how they function as noun with an example. Running is a good habit. Here, running functions as noun in the sentence. Now, let's understand how they function as an adverb with an example. Alia went to UK to study. Here, study functions as adverb in the sentence. Non-finite verbs are further divided into three types: gerund. infinitives and participles we will discuss about them in our next video that's all for now let's quickly revise what we have learned in this lesson we understood what is finite verb it is a verb that has an agreement with subject it change as per the tense person and number of subject then we understood what is non finite verb it is a verb that has no agreement with the subject it doesn't change as per the tense person and number then we understood the usage of non finite verb in the sentence they are used as adjective noun and adverb in the sentence finally we showed the division of non finite verbs they are divided into three parts participles gerunds and infinitives so that's all in this lesson thank you for watching the Okay. Do you have any question here? I think you got all the ideas. And if you remember three words he made at the end of his presentation: gerund, uh, participle, and infinitives. Right. did you know this point you know gerund means the verb use in gerund form they do not carry tense not inflected by uh, person also and number and that is called non finite next one is 
participle uh, do you have any idea about participle can anybody help me what sort of verb is participle are you listening yes sir participle yes sir what sort of verb is called sir, participle can be breaking news so uh, breaking is here a uh, present participle then the uh, news is a present participle news is a verb yes and? present participle breaking and yes. again broken window so broken is past participle yes so this these two break, broken and breaking uh, yeah. functions as adjective adjective yeah participle can be present also and absolute also right so the and to infinitive to infinitive to plus verb is used that is also non finite this is the summary of finite and non finite let's see here in my slide again verb which have past or present forms are called finite verb you know that right subject plus present form or past form is finite form for example yeah you can see here uh, drive a car he drives a car right uh, in non finite verb in other form for example infinitive it means to infinitive ing or ed did you get my point here verb having tense or inflected by tense person and number they are called finite and verb which have or verbs which have no such inflection are called non finite or some people call infinite also non finite verb or in other word what you can say verb use in gerund form or to infinitive form or participle form are called what non finite are you clear any question any confusion if you have please without hesitation ask me see the example here then david plays piano finite or which one finite i have written here look at here i think you are feeling sleepy nobody is responding or is it plays finite why it is finite there are three criteria of finite verb one is what tense right remember this tense which tense is this which tense present is present tense present tense yes present simple and david means which person david means which person which person third person third person and singular which number which number third person sir which number singular. singular number yes use these singular. three criteria right if you get answer of these three for example tense for example person for example number then it is finite finite look at here my sister which tense he spoke means into past past tense Past, past simple past. and my sister which number uh, which number or person my sister which person person third person third person singular plural singular singular, singular. yes then it is finite finite get okay, it living it tense no tense is that tense Levi, can you guess tense? No, no tense. No tense. And is there subject and for you can say singular or plural? Singular. 
person no then no infinite right no. and this one is to infinite look at here does it have subject yes tense no number no 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 sir no sir infinite i think i tried my best to convince you right about finite and non finite you can say some people say infinite also but mostly it is non finite many people look at here again now it's your job to find out uh, which one is finite and which one is non finite for example this one and this one runs finite and two and are is non-finite. This one is? Yeah, it is finite. finite. This one is? Finite. This one is non-finite. Finite. Non -finite. Finite. Yeah. This is non-finite. Non-finite. Which one is finite? Finite. Have is finite or non-finite? I don't know. Have is tense. I think this is I think it's non-finite. Not finite. only seeing. But I think it's finite. Finite. Have is finite because uh, it has. There are two verbs. Look at it. Have and okay. Let me show you once again. I think you forget to read one line from that hands out I showed you last time. Hey. I want to again show you this. Uh, which one? Can you see this one? Okay. Did this one? What is written here? I have highlighted this. It's not blue, I, by the way. First one is called blue. A compound verb is actually made up of one finite verb, uh, which is always first auxiliary verb, while the remaining non-finite parts are base form or participle. Did you get the answer here? Yes, sir. And let's go to this slide. Where is it? Okay. Here. What is this then? And this one. The have is the finite and run is non-finite. This one is non-finite. Non okay. Don't be confused with this. And this watching is finite. Okay. This is what I want to say, the concept of finite and non-finite. The last item of form, you all know that, I just showed you, there are how many forms of verb? How many forms of verb? Five. Five, Five. Forms, right? Right. Some verbs are regular and some verbs are Irregular. Irregular. Yeah. It's a very common thing. And again, once again, I have one video. Maybe you are feeling bored, right? I'm showing one after another videos. Uh, the last thing I want to show. Sorry. Okay, see, see this one. <laughs> Yeah, this is my turn. <laughs> Hello. It will include what they exactly are, how they are formed, and what is the difference between the two. So without a further go, let's get started. Let's first remember what we have already learned in our parts of speech video series related to forms of verb. During the discussion of forms of verb in our video, we understood 
that verbs change as per tense and they are divided into three main forms which are base form or present form past form and past participle form if you haven't watched that video or need a revision i will provide the links in the description now let's look into the examples of it verb arrive in present tense becomes arrived in past and arrived in past participle form let's look into one more example verb drink in present form becomes drank in past form and drunk in past participle form now as you can see for converting a word arrive to past and past participle form we used ed but for converting the word drink we didn't use any such pattern so the verb which is following a pattern for conversion from present to past and past to past participle is a regular verb and the verb which is not following any pattern for conversion from present to past and past to past participle form is irregular verb let's redefine them based on the formation of past and past participle forms verbs are divided into two types regular verbs and irregular verbs regular verbs are verbs that follow a fixed pattern while conversion from present to past and past participle form while irregular verbs are verbs that do not follow a fixed pattern while conversion from present to past and past participle forms regular verbs are formed by adding ed d or ied to verbs base form as per the last character in the verb as irregular verbs do not follow any such pattern we cannot form just by adding a specific character the irregular verbs let's now understand how regular verbs are formed most regular verbs are formed by adding ed to the base form of the word let's take example of verb jump we add ed at the end of the word to get the past or past participle form so jump become jumped in past and past participle form let's look into some more example call converts to called in past form and past participle form look converts to looked in past and past participle form now there are some cases where we need to modify some parts of the words when we are adding ed let's look into those cases regular verbs formed by adding d to the base form of the word if a verb ends in e we simply add d to convert it into past and past participle form for example like here the verb ends with e so we just add d after e for getting the past and past participle forms so it will become liked for past and past participle form both let's look into two more examples agree becomes agreed by adding d for getting the past and past participle form die becomes died by adding d for getting the past and past participle form let's look into one more case regular verbs formed by adding ied to the base form of the verb if the verb ends in a consonant y we replace it with ied for example cry here the verb ends with y so we replace y with ied for getting the past and past participle forms so cry becomes cried in past as well as past participle form let's look into some more example study becomes studied by replacing y to ied in past as well as past participle form marry becomes married by replacing y to ied in past and past participle form so here we understood how to create regular verbs let's now look into irregular verbs we understood that irregular verbs do not form any fixed pattern for our understanding we will divide them into four groups group 1 group 1 will contain verbs whose all three verb forms are same group 2 will contain same past and past participle form of verbs group 3 will contain same base and past participle form of verbs and group 4 will contain all three forms of verb which are different 
Let's look into examples of irregular verbs of group 1. All three verb forms are same. Examples for base form, past form and past participle form. Put in base form remains put in past and past participle form. Cut in base form remains cut in past and past participle form. Hurt in base form remains hurt in past and past participle form. Let's look into examples of group 2. Same past and past participle form. Buy in base form becomes bought in past and remains same bought in the past participle form as well. Feel in base form becomes felt in past and remains felt in past participle form as well. Win in base form becomes won in past and remains won in past participle form as well. Let's look into group 3 having same base and past participle form. Come in base form converts to came in past form and in past participle form it again converts to come. Become in base form converts to became in past form and in past participle form it again converts to become. Run in base form converts to ran in past form and in past participle form it again converts to run. So here were the examples of group 3. Let's look into group 4 examples. All three forms are different here. Break in base form becomes broke in past form and broken in past participle form. Go in base form becomes went in past form and gone in past participle form. Swim in base form becomes swam in past form and swum in past participle form. As you can understand from the examples, for irregular verb, there is no specific way to convert from base form to past and past participle form. So you will have to learn them. That's all in this video. Let's quickly revise what we learned in this lesson. Firstly, we understood that there are two types of verbs based on form of verbs. Regular verbs and irregular verbs. Regular verbs follow a fixed pattern while conversion from present to past and past to past participle form, while irregular verbs do not follow any such pattern. Then we understood how irregular verbs are formed. They are formed by adding ed, d or ied based on the last character of the verb. Finally, we looked into four groups of irregular verb. Group 1 having all three verb forms same. Group 2 having same past and past participle form. Group 3 having same base and past participle form. Group 4 having all the verb forms different. That's all about regular and irregular. Okay. I think you got idea of uh, the regular and irregular verb form. Uh, before uh, we go to regular and irregular verb form, let's see some names of verb form. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Are, there are how many verb forms? How many verb forms? Five verb forms. Oh, five verb forms. They have different name. Maybe uh, some of you know that, and some of you may have confusion. Given is also called what? Base form. Base form. And is also called sometime present, but P five is also present. B two is called past, past form. B3 is called? B3 is called? Past participle. Past participle. Past participle. And B4 is called? Present participle. Yes, present participle. It is called present. Present participle. And this B5? Is B5 or present? Present. Called okay. present. This one is also present and this one is also called present. 
present, right? So when we convert uh, one verb into different forms, pattern can be regular or irregular, right? For example, for example, uh, uh, you got the example, for example, cut. You, or for example, first of all, walked. It can be generally we make a uh, past form or participle uh, from using ed, right? So you can see regular pattern here. And next one is box. Box. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is B one, B one. And this one. Next one is V two. And next one. This is V three. Uh, v three. And this one is V four. And this one is V five. When we use regular patterns of using D or ED, it is called regular verb, regular, regular verb. They are called regular verb, right? There can be many other verb you can list over here. And when they do not follow, it means when verb or verbs do not follow the pattern of using ED while making past and past participle, they are called irregular. For example, cut, in case of cut, same form we use, right? And for example, in case of run, what is that? Ran, and then again, what is that? Run, run, run. R -U -N. running, right? Runs, right? Runs. Forget about other, for example, go, go, Went, gone, right? Went, gone. Break, broken, and broken, for example. Broken. Came, come, for example, right? If our pattern, patterns of making past form or participle form using ED uh, does not work, this is called irregular verb. Means when our formula of making past and participle doesn't work, it is called irregular. They are called irregular verbs. And when we can use ed or our formula of making past, that is called regular verb. I think you got the concept. It's not difficult, right? Uh, the same thing is there. Yes, sir. Example, look at an example. My mother, late nights. Works. works. My mother works late night. Yesterday I took, took the, the dog for a, for a long walk. Long walk. I eat my own vegetables last year. Grew my own grew. vegetables. Yeah. Grew. Grew my vegetables. I grew. So in the first example, works. Is it regular or irregular verb? Regular. It's a regular. 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 Because we can use S or ES in present form, ED in past form and participle form. That's why it is regular. And in the second example, took. Regular or irregular? Irregular. Regular. Irregular. Irregular. To take on, right? There are different varieties, different form. It is not there. We cannot write ticked. That's why it's irregular. Mm. And next one, uh, grew or gross. Regular, irregular? Irregular. Irregular, irregular sir. Irregular. 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 Because grew, grew. Irregular. Yeah. We cannot add ed and make past and parts participle. Ed. Okay, in this way, we can summarize verb and verb forms. Main verb, okay, let's go back to again. 
I want to go back to the slide. Don't be confused. Do you have any confusion today? What is Bob? I talk mm -hmm. Action. State word. And state. Yeah. Talking about subject. Uh, um, of a subject. Yes, of a subject. Kinds. Main verbs. Can be. Main verb and auxiliary verb. Main verbs are also two types. And auxiliary verbs are also two types. Main verb can be. Yeah. What? Action verb or state verb. Auxiliary verb. verb can be. Action and. Primary and. Primary modal. and modal auxiliaries. Transitive and intransitive. Transitive means. Verb which takes object. Yeah, having object, and you can ask question of what? Whom what? and what? Yeah, it means whom and what? Yeah. Transmission of action or action carrier object will be there, but intransitive, they aren't. Finite and non-finite. Finite. What does finite do? It carries or it affected by tense. What next? Tense. Person. Person. It changes number. for tense, number, and person. person yes. And but not in non finite verb. Or non finite verb can be gerund. What next? Participle. 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 And, and infinite. And infinite. 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 And there are five forms. Regular means which use formula of using ed, ed, past and participle. And if that formula doesn't work, that is irregular. It is form based. Irregular. Right. So these are kinds of verbs and kinds or types. Okay, I have finished all the slides and the content I have brought. And if you have any anything, any any queries, right? We can discuss now. We have around five ten minutes left. Is there anything? Uh, discuss now. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Can you can you explain uh, auxiliary verb and more modal auxiliary verb again, sir? Okay, auxiliaries. Models are also auxiliaries, Bob. Right? There are primary auxiliaries and second auxiliaries. Bob means helping Bob. They help main Bob to find meanings or to clear the meanings of sentence. They're auxiliaries. They help. They are not complete in themselves. Neither uh, primary auxiliaries nor modal auxiliaries. But modal auxiliaries simply they talk about modality. Modality means likelihood, for example, possibility, for example, capabilities, for example, it means ability, for example. Right? They are modal auxiliaries. There are three uh, primary auxiliaries, Bob. But auxiliaries means helping Bob, not not anything else. Auxiliary, auxiliary, meaning of auxiliaries is help. Help, main verb. That means here. Is it okay, madam? Here, me. Yes, sir. Anything else? Sir, um, that non-finite thing, yes. uh, I may have, I may have done something uh, that you, uh, um, may is finite, but have, uh, have been doing, I may have been doing this. So have been doing according to your slide or according to your, that um, word file, um, non-finite. It is new for me. Okay. Um, 
beforehand um, i i got that notion that uh, those are also finite because those are also maintaining uh, also um, following uh, subject and tense i may have been doing this so uh, got, yes i may have been joking uh, when i said that so i, I said may, may, I had off, right yes sir that is new for me oh yeah yeah before uh, before i used to know that you yeah, may have been joking all are finite because um, these are actually following subject and tense but it's oh. new for me okay but if you if you if you leave the number one and in the next next one you can see was was means yes, sir. you can clearly see the tense here right but this may depend upon the said right you can't guess the tense of me right but you need to take help of said but in case of this helen you can see was was means past tense you can see had had means also past tense if you see is it is also present tense right so these are finite but coming is yeah. non finite Then I'm fine, right? Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, any other thing? And uh, uh, I think today you didn't uh, you didn't feel difficult to understand me because I haven't used any jargon. There were there were verbs and satellites uh, and uh, acts, uh, maybe uh, the uh, thematic role of verbs and so on. I have omitted and I have just brought. A very much useful thing in your class. I think it is comprehensible. Is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then I will provide you yes, video sir. also. You can go through the yes, video. Sir. It is very simple and very useful also. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Are you saying? Yes, sir. Uh, since you are not using those jargons in while while writing those essays, uh, should we do write in plain English or? that we have to include english don't don't use jargons very simple english comprehensible english that a uh, layman can also understand your writing but writing means uh, one thing uh, in your narrative for example reflection reflection i am repeating reflection in the sense that this is english class right you need to show your skills of writing also right not the jargon skill right your presentation your grammar for example right your word selection for example uh, these should be maintained in your writing because we are the students of english we, we are going to be a linguist later for example plt trainer for example maybe editor for example right you need to know how to write also right that's why we are focusing i am focusing on your reflection writing please uh, write carefully because some of you are Uh, still missing that uh, third person inflection for example he eats or i eat for example right this kind i'm not saying that exactly so these mistakes are still a mistake for us we are student of master's degree and if you have still problem in agreement for example and if your word selection is not proper or if your presentation is not good right uh, it's not excusable did you get my point we need to have right because we are the student of english not of other subject so uh, try to shine try to polish uh, your language while writing it is necessary it is mandatory right so yes. and now what about the reflection sir um, is there i don't see any uh, space for uh, submitting reflection no no there so, are you... see properly i have created uh, room for reflection also and for this class also i'll create right don't yeah. worry reflection for bob will be there tomorrow you just go and surf your uh, the moodle you will find is it okay madam yes sir for every class we have to submit one reflection last time it was collectively so yes that's what uh, we submitted in the reflection 3 where you have written yes. we submitted our reflections over there collectively yeah. so probably for today's session if you are doing in whichever module you'll have to probably add a separate space uh, yeah. as requested earlier I'll also separate, so separately i'll i'll space, make i'll i'll make i'll make uh, excuse okay. me sir i didn't post anything in the reflection tree sir like module we have done module 1 and 2 sir i post yeah. all the reflection like three classes of uh, first okay. doesn't matter you just be thematic for example if it is about verb right reflection about verb it's about word classes right reflection about word classes that's okay 
doesn't matter. Or you can write individually also for each day. For example, in some of the days we were only revising the thing, right? You don't have to write reflection for revision. A reflection for the thing, we, the content over there, it's okay. But it's up to you. Reflection means it's up to you. But do not uh, write the same thing in reflection and in your assignment. Reflection simply means that it's a gist of the understanding, right? Gist of the presentation we have made in our class. And be personal there. Don't be academic. I mean to say that uh, you need to be critical in writing reflection. Reflection means your own opinion. It's not the opinions of teachers and other while presenting be somehow evaluative also, I mean. Critical means evaluative. You don't have to agree me, you don't have to disagree me, at your own perspective also, and the thing we make. You can be disagree, you can be agree. So be evaluative, I mean, be critical while writing your reflection. Is it okay? Now onward, from today onward, you don't have assignments. You have only reflection writing. Your assignment is over. And you can revisit, you can rewrite, and you can upgrade your grade. So, and how do we submit it? Do we send it to an email or do we, will you okay, uh, check you in the send, technical send me department? I, I, I said, I have already said you that about this, right? I'll email again? Okay, sir. All right. That person, uh, that, uh, that uh, technicians of our university, if possible, you have to better upload in our model. If not, the email is there. I'll make your separate folder and keep your assignment in the separate folder also uh, yourself, right? Uh, if I miss some of your assignment, you have to send me later. Is it okay? If, uh, yes, sir, it's okay. Folder. Okay, sir. Excuse me, because, sir. Yeah, for final evaluation, I have to submit those all, all, all your assignment to the uh, examination board. That's why uh, you have to keep yourself also. I'll, I'll maintain your folder also myself. Are you saying anything, anybody? Excuse me, sir. Yeah, ma'am. So next time I'm going to present about verbs. Oh. So do I need to uh, explain all the things that you have shared? I mean- No, no, only yeah. talk, uh, talk about uh, verbs and uh, transit, you just up to number two, because there is another friend also, right? Who is there? Okay, so main verbs and transitive verbs. Uh, main verbs and this one and number two. You just introduce verb and yeah. incorporate up to transitive and intransitive verb. And your so who is friend. another person for the next for coming week? Okay, I let me see. I don't know. I have to see. I have here. So after me, there there is Hari. I think. Okay. And yes. after Hari, there is Hemanti and then Gina. Okay. Oh, next week. So, sir, uh, uh, there is no class next week, right? Because we are going to have holiday. Oh, yeah. Is there a holiday? On Friday, yes. Yeah, sir. yeah, it begins from Friday. Did you check your calendar? Yeah. Yes, sir. Maybe, maybe I don't know. I haven't checked my calendar. If it is so, there will be. Next week. After that, uh, after... Um, Thought then. Yeah. Tituna ji, Gita ji is there, right? Uh, Bob's and uh, yeah, Ari. Ari sir, are you listening to me? Ari sir, can you hear me? He is not here, sir. Okay, he's not there. Uh, Gita ma'am, you just uh, prepare on that, right? Bob's and till up yes, to. Sir. Right, and next week, next week means if it's not on the next week, then another week we will do, right? Okay, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Excuse me, sir. Questions, yes. May I ask you one question? Is generally friction is for also the grade?